I invite you to grab your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We'll be reading verse 7 through 39. John 4, verse 7 through 39. 38, sorry. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that was saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become to him a spring of water welling up, of, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming, when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You will worship what you do not know. Sorry, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He was called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. But no one said, What do you seek? Or, Why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out to the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to him, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, There are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages, gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for these words you have in your word for us to look at today. Words that remind us the importance of worshiping you and why we worship you. So Lord God, we ask you to open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear from you, and give us the courage to put into practice what you teach us this morning. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. This morning we're looking at the third topic in our series on the vision that God has given us as a church, and that being the purpose and vision of worship, um, something that God has called all Christians to do. And, and worship has different forms and parts to it, but all of it that we do is to be an act of worship to the Lord. In today, in the word of April of 1989, had this little story about um, Henry Beecher's brother. Here's how it goes. During the tenure of the great orator Henry Ward Beecher, a visiting minister, happens to be his brother, once substituted for the popular preacher. A large audience had already assembled to hear Beecher. And when the substitute pastor stepped into the pulpit, several disappointed listeners began to move towards the exits. That's when the minister stood and said loudly, all who are, have come here today to worship Henry Ward Beecher may now withdraw from the church. All who have come to worship God, keep your seats. <laughs> I admit I'd like Henry Ward Beecher's brother and his approach here. <laughs> Because after all, who have we come to worship, right? It's not any one person. It's to worship God. And it is a sad thing sometimes that people decide that they're going to move from one church to another because they like to worship in another church or because they like another pastor better because they're focusing on people instead of the person we have come to worship. And that again is God. That is why we come together on Sunday mornings to worship God. Now, we should worship God more than just Sunday mornings together, but throughout the week. But when we come together, it's focusing our eyes on Jesus, focusing our eyes on God. And so it just shouldn't matter what we're singing. Well, <laughs> what we sing is still important because it needs to be lined up in truth of who God is. But whatever the song we sing that is lined with God and his word needs to be we need to sing those songs of praise and hymns to the Lord. Focus on Him. It doesn't matter if we don't like the tune or not. It's about God. Here's our statement of purpose for our church again. The purpose of NLCC is to bring glory to God by evangelizing the lost, discipling the body, praying in corporate unity, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, and fellowshipping together in biblical community. Further to this and focus on our statement on worship, we have written this as part of our vision document as well. Worship. Worship God in spirit and in truth. To worship God in spirit and truth as a community, we will have weekly times of corporate worship, which will include singing contemporary praise and worship music, testimony or testify, children's lessons, prayer, sermons, communion, and baptisms. It is our desire that all who come to be part of this body will have the freedom to worship in the way God directs them to, whether to be in clapping, dancing, exercising spiritual gifts, listening, raising hands, etc. It really has been a desire of our churches to be a church that worships God in spirit and truth, but also to allow people to express their worship to the Lord freely too. It's exciting to see when one song shines this song this morning, saw Bella was clapping in parts of the song. And, and everyone in, who's a part of our church, whoever comes on a Sunday, should feel that freedom to be able to worship the Lord, whether it's clapping our hands or just listening to the words or dancing. However God leads a person to worship, as you've heard me say often, we should feel free to worship the Lord as they feel led by the Lord in accordance with his word still. So there's two points for us this morning in this passage. 
I'm sure you're all going to be the guests of these two. But here's the first one. True worshipers worship God in spirit. True worshipers worship God in spirit. In our passage this morning, verse 23, we see Jesus gives these words to the Samaritan woman. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. True worshipers of God will worship God in spirit. Well, what does that mean to worship God in spirit? Well, first of all, look in the word for spirit here. It's the Greek word pneuma, which means air in movement or, or bro- blowing and breathing. It, number two definition for this is that which animates or gives life to the body or breath. When we see in Genesis chapter 1, when God first created man and woman, when he first created Eve or Adam, he blew his life into Adam. That was the breath of God. Third definition for spirit for this word here is a part of human personality. Well, that's not really the definition we're looking for this morning, is it? Fourth definition, though, too, is an independent uncorporeal being in contrast to being that can be perceived by a physical sense. Um, So it's not necessarily being able to see it, but sensing a presence. And that specifically relates to the Holy Spirit. Have you ever been in a time where you're being, all of a sudden you have this sense of peace? I know I've had those times where all of a sudden I have this sense of peace overwhelmingly because it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Or maybe it's a sense of peace that you're going, huh, I sense someone's praying for me, and because of that, I sense the Holy Spirit is with me. It's that presence of this fourth definition. Number five definition is this. God's being as controlling influence with focus on association of humans. So it's, in, in essence, a tying together of the bodies of bel- body of believers. What it comes down to most of all is this, though is life. The fact that God has breathed his life in us, we must worship the Lord with life. What does that mean then? Well, I think it means this. Worshiping God with all of our being. No matter where we're at, worshiping the Lord, even using our minds, thinking on the truth of God and his word, And then also seeing praise and using our emotions with that too. I'm not suggesting emotionalism. Um, I have been in some churches, I remember when there was the worship wars in churches when the music was kind of starting to change in North American church. And I remember the church I went in, there was a fight between people about should it be just hymns or should it be worship music or should it be both? Um, Funny thing is, why would you distinguish between hymns and worship music? Aren't hymns worship music too? Any song that brings praise to God is worship music. And so any song we use again is to be focused on God. You've heard me say this before, that with worship music, it it has to be one of three factors. One, either it talks about God or it's speaking um, about a relationship with God or our response to God. If it doesn't match those three things because it would be rooted in God's word then, then we shouldn't be singing those type of songs otherwise. So worshiping God in spirit involves the heart. In other words, the will. We look at the heart differently in North America than, than the Jews do. We think of the heart as that's the center of our emotion, right? But the Jews actually look at that as the will. So when we are worshiping God in spirit, it involves our will the desire to worship God. Psalm 111 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company of the upright and in the assembly. So we are to worship God with our will. Be worshiping God in spirit involves the soul. Now the Jews recognize the soul as the seat of emotion. What we consider the hearts to be. 
So it is the center of our emotion. Psalm 42 verse 5 says, Why are you despair, in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. The writer of this psalm is talking about worshiping God and telling his soul, why be downcast? Why be so upset? Praise God, even in that situation. Then Psalm 146, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. In other words, worship God with all that you are. Now we're not going to look at these next two parts because I didn't bring these in, but with our whole body, our, that means our strength too and our mind. When we worship the Lord with our minds too, we're studying God's word. But we're also looking at when we sing songs of praise, does it fit God's word correctly? So first of all, as Christians, we're called to worship the Lord in spirit. Number two, we're to worship, true worshipers worship God in truth. Again, Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, but the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. We must worship God in truth. The word truth here is a Greek word, aletheia, which means the quality of being in accord with what is true, whatever is dependable, whatever is upright. It also means an actual event or state. In other words, reality. So when we see a reality of a situation, that too can be a thing of worshiping God in truth. What is actually happening? So that leads us that we should be in God's word and studying it. So worshiping God in truth involves knowledge of God. Ezekiel 39 verse 7 says, My holy name I will make known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let my holy name be profaned anymore. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. That first part, my holy name will, be, will make known in the midst of my people Israel. It's that word known. To know something. So we need to have that knowledge of God. How do we do that? Well, obviously by being in His Word daily. The Bible is where we get and understand who God is and what He's called us to as well. And then B, worshiping God in truth involves understanding of God. Not enough to have the knowledge of God, but understanding God as well. Psalm 14, verse 2 says, The Lord has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. To understand God, we must seek after God. And again, that involves spending time with the Lord in prayer daily, in His Word daily, spending time with Him throughout the day. Yes, it's important to have some time in the day to set aside, to say, stop and be before the Lord in word and prayer. But throughout the day, being in prayer and conversation with God. Yesterday, we were on the road to Edmonton to, for a funeral for my cousin. Um, cousin, I didn't really know him very well. Um, but I wanted to be there for my uncle and the rest of my family. And f and in fact, they asked me would I read scripture and pray for the, in the service. Uh, which, which I did. But on the way there, um, Sherry and I were talking throughout our ride, but there were a couple of times of silence in the vehicle. In those times of silence, I was praying and talking to the Lord and asking things of the Lord. And one thing he said to me as we were driving, rest in me. That was a word I needed to hear in that moment. So in that silence, I just took some deep breaths and said, thank you, Lord, for reminding me to rest in you. 
having that time to be just with the Lord, to allow Him to speak to us, to hear His voice. It may be as simple as we saw a number of weeks ago when we had a video from uh, John Eldridge. Sometimes just listen to God's voice, and often God would say to him, I love you. And it may be just very that very thing too sometimes. When God speaks to you, and maybe more often he just says to you, I love you. But it's something he wants you to hear from him. That's why it's important for us to understand God, to seek God each moment of every day. So we are called to be true worshipers of God. That is why Jesus told the Samaritan woman and tell us this in this passage this morning that true worshipers worship God in spirit and in truth. So may we as brothers and sisters in the Lord as his church worship God in spirit and in truth. The God who created the universe wants you to know him because of his great kindness and love. Do you want to know God? Then worship Him in the way He intended you to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank You so much for Your Word. These words, these two simple words, spirit and truth, the way You've called us to worship You. Lord God, we pray and ask that we'd be reminded of this throughout each day, that you've called us to be worshipers of you. So Lord, may we worship you with all our being and everything that we do and say may be an act of worship to you. And in those times too, we take that time in prayer and in your word and maybe it's singing a song of praise to you. May our eyes be focused on you always, Lord God. And may we draw to you, closer to you, as you desire that, to have such close, close, intimate relationship with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've called us into relationship with you. Amen.